This is Matter News, and these are today's headlines. CISA students head to the polls next week to elect USU and A as representatives. Hello, and welcome to Matador News. I'm Ricardo Sandoval. And I'm Manuel Fuentes. Uncle Sam needs to borrow a ton of money this week. The Treasury Department says the U.S. plans to sell about $294 billion of debt. Washington's borrowing costs have gone up quickly in recent months. Federal revenue is declining because of President Trump's tax cuts. So the government needs the money to make ends meet. This is the highest amount for a week since the record set during the 2008 financial crisis. Still no word from the president himself about the recent allegations from Stormy Daniels about an affair in and the effort to cover it up. Today, Daniels' friend Alana Evans says she is planning to sue Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohen, for defamation. Evans has backed up Daniels' story. Daniels filed her defamation suit against Cohen yesterday. Both claim Cohen defamed them by questioning their truthfulness. Cohen has says his legal team responded to the claims deriving the stories of both women. And UCNN poll says 63% of people believe Daniel's claim of having the affair with President Trump. Daniel's appeared on 60 Minutes breaking her silence on the alleged affair with President Trump. 60 Minutes had its highest rating episode yet, averaging 22.1 million viewers on Sunday's episode. We spoke to CSUN students asking their opinion on the story. I feel like only she knows and only Donald Trump knows. Um, we can only assume right now, and um, I can say that it's probably true. She's right to speak up and want to speak up, and she should be able to speak up. I think that's a very um, American value to be able to call out people in power for what they've done and for them to be honest about it. White House Deputy Press Secretary Raj Shah said yesterday Trump is denying the affair. CSUN's joint elections for Associated Students and University Student Union are happening next week. Matador News reporter Carissa Preciado has more. As students are returning back from spring break, preparations for finals begin, as well as Associated Student and University Student Union elections. We spoke with Chair of Election Ronnie Medrano and Assistant Chair of Election Stacey Aguilla, who gave us more information on, on the elections and on the possible tuition hikes. Okay, so the AS election happening next Wednesday and Thursday is for the new Senate and President and Vice President positions for next school year. Um, we have several different slates, several different candidates for each position, and elections take place at the Arbor Grill in front of the Oviatt Library and the bookstore from 8 to 6 p.m., as well as voting online through your email. As of right now, there are only candidates um, that students get to vote for. I'll um, along with club competition, so clubs were entered to get voted on and whoever wins, they win a monetary prize of $800. Oh, okay. So there is a potential tuition increase. Uh, I don't exactly know where that's going to lead to right now. I know a couple of us in student leadership this couple weeks ago went up to Sacramento and we lobbied against the tuition increase. So we should be finding out whether there is going to be an increase or not, hopefully, obviously, before the next semester. Um, but again, we really hope that whoever is elected to this president position really stands by keeping tuition at a low cost for students and they fight against any possible tuitions in the future. We have an uh, opportunity today to meet all the candidates at the farmers market um, along with the debate tomorrow which is mainly focusing on president vice president but slate um, for other senator positions will be there as well. Students can cast their ballots online on April 4th. There will also be multiple polling sites in campus on April 5th. Don't forget to vote. Now back to the studio with Manuel. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is believed to have wrapped up a secret visit to China. Rumors began swirling of Kim Jong-un's after images showed what appeared to be a North Korean train arriving in China Monday night. Officials says the meeting was likely aimed at trying to restore the strain relationship between the two countries. If Kim Jong-un didn't make the trip to China, it would be the first time the leader has left North Korea since taking over in 2011. Kim Jong-un is also said to meet with South Korean leaders and potentially with U.S. President Donald Trump. A Chinese space lab is expected to fall into Earth within days. The European Space Agency says China's first prototype space station will be crashing into Earth between March 30th and April 2nd. Most of the station is likely to burn in the atmosphere, but some debris could hit the surface of the Earth. China says they lost the space station in 2016 and are not sure where it will exactly end up. The California Department of Justice says it will be the independent investigator of the death of Stephen Clark. 
Sacramento Police Chief Daniel Hans cites extremely high emotions and anger as the reasoning. The shooting has sparked days of protests from public figures, celebrities, and athletes. Han says while many people are protesting, it is important to stay calm. As the capital of California, we often see the rights of protesters exercised in our city. But as we have seen, I am concerned that as a community, we exercise calm over the coming weeks and months, and that we don't have any more tragedies, injuries, or property damage, as that does not help us move forward. California Attorney General Javier Becerra will be the man in charge of the investigation. Becerra says the investigation will be based on facts and the law, nothing more, nothing less. Video surveillance shows two officers shooting Clark 20 times in grandmother's backyard. In Louisiana, no charges will be filed against two Baton Rouge police officers in the 26th shooting of Alton Sterling. Louisiana Attorney General Jeff Landry says the officers' actions were well-founded and reasonable. Outrage over Sterling's death led to the renewed Black Lives Matter protests across the nation. Sterling was shot and killed by one of the two officers who confronted him outside a convenience store in 2016. Cell phone video showed Sterling pinned to the ground by the two officers before he was shot. Police said Sterling was shot because he was reaching for a gun. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg is testifying before Congress. Zuckerberg's testimony will put pressure on Google and Twitter CEOs to do the same. Senate Judiciary Chairman Chuck Grassley invited all three CEOs to a hearing on data privacy on April 10th. Facebook is accused of exploiting 50 million users' data by giving British research firm Cambridge Analytica access to the information through an app. Now Facebook is trying to regain the public's trust in its commitment to privacy and data protection. The company's stock price has dropped 3% today. The Federal Trade Commission announced it was in investigating the Facebook data scandal. Now, let's go back to Cloudy Flores with the latest in business. Thank you, Manny. Apple is releasing new cheaper iPads that come with Apple Pencils for students. CEO Tim Cook and his executive team says they want to discuss creative new ideas for teachers and students. The student iPad will be the same size as the traditional one and will be capable of saving 200 gigabytes instead of 50. It will be sold for $299 for schools and $329 for consumers. Apple officials say instead of dissecting frogs, students can dissect frogs with an Apple Pencil. Self-driving car project Waymo is set to buy 20,000 electric vehicles from Land Rover and Jaguar. This is an attempt to create a robotic ride hailing service. Waymo made an announcement today that this is another step towards reshaping transportation. The ride hailing service is set to launch in Phoenix later this year. If the service does well, the company would expand its cars to other states. Let's go to Matador News reporter Daria Hariri in the newsroom with the latest news on the economy. United States consumer confidence has decreased after reaching an 18-year high last month. The conference board says consumers are less optimistic this month about their financial futures. On the other hand, some CSUN students are optimistic about their financial future. I've always been optimistic because I just have always wanted to make a lot of money in life. However, like honestly, the most important to me is loving my job because I don't want to wake up every morning and be like dreading work. So it's I'm like optimistic for both like success and money. So yeah. I feel like uh, I have a lot of resources that um, it's presented to me. So yeah, I'm pretty optimistic about my financial future. Personally, I do feel secure with my financial future, um, with the major I'm going into and, you know, the job opportunities available and the internships available for me right now. I do feel optimistic, you know, I'll be able to get out of my student loans and everything like that and be able to have a successful life. I do feel financially optimistic because, well, we're in college for a reason, you know, I obviously see myself as a potential. I feel like even other people, like, going to college, see, like, themselves having an op Even if they say they're not optimistic, they, they must be optimistic because they're going to college. They must see themselves doing something bigger in life. Like, for example, like, I feel like I'm ready because I'm going to go help the Native American community. There's not a lot of people helping the Native American community, so I feel like I'll be, um, I am fortunate enough to be able to go into something I love and, like, make my financial uh, optimistic way of life happen. Studies are showing that job prospects for college graduates are definitely better than for those who don't get a college diploma. Now let's go back to the studio where Maya Milan Wright has the latest in sports. 
NBA player Isaiah Thomas has been excused from the L.A. Lakers after suffering a hip injury. Thomas was ruled out of games on Saturday and Monday due to the pain. The athlete flew to New York on Monday to seek evaluations for his hip. The point guard has averaged 15.6 points and five assists since being traded by the Cleveland Cavaliers to the Lakers last month. LeAngelo Ball, the younger brother of the Lakers, rookie Lonzo Ball, has declared for the 2018 NBA draft. LeAngelo currently plays overseas in Luthania with the youngest Ball brother, LaMelo. In nine games with the team this season, LeAngelo has averaged nearly 16 points, three rebounds, and one assist. Bearing an invite to the combine, LeAngelo would be able to continue playing overseas until he is picked or not picked by an NBA team in June. The Dodgers' opening day is boiling up to an exciting new season. They have a roster filled with prominent players to kick the season off just right. Although there is a lot of enthusiasm, some fans are saddened about the big offseason trade. A CSUN student says although she's happy about the, most of the players' moves, some people leaving is a disappointment. I'm very excited. I am a little sad that Adrian was moved. Um, he's one of my favorite players. And so um, I didn't like that move, but um, hopefully this season they actually, you know, win. Not all students on campus are Dodger fans. Another CSUN student says he's rooting for the Angels. No, definitely not. I'm excited to see the Angels play because, you know, living in L.A., everyone likes the Dodgers, but the Dodgers suck, went to the World Series and lost. So my team's going to be good. So definitely not looking forward to the Dodgers. With the first freeway series inning today, we'll see who has the early bragging rights for the season. Now, let's go back to Claudia with entertainment. Pop star Christina Aguilera went makeup free for the cover of Paper Magazine. It is part of the magazine's Transformation 2018 issue. Aguilera says there is always going to be people out there with their own definitions of beauty. The singer says she thinks the fashion and beauty industries are moving towards inclusivity. She feels they are heading in the right direction. EDM group Swedish House Mafia reunited on Sunday on the Ultra Miami stage after much speculation. The group reunited for Ultra's 20th year anniversary. This is the first time they have played together since 2013. Group member Axwell says it's Swedish House Mafia for life this time. The group member's only message on social media was, it's time. Now back to Emilio Milan with health. A new toxicology report reveals pop star icon Prince had high levels of fentanyl in his body. Dr. Lewis Nelson at Ruger's New Jersey Medical says the amount in his blood was exceedingly high even for somebody who is a chronic pain patient on fentanyl patches. He called the fentanyl concentration levels a pretty clear smoking gun. Prince's liver indicated signs of an overdose or fatal toxicity cases. The lead prosecutor says after reviewing law enforcement reports, he is thinking about pressing future charges to anyone who may have been involved. Seniors are paying more for prescription medicine. The cost of 20 most commonly prescribed brand name drugs for seniors have risen nearly 10 times over the past five years. Monday's congressional report examined the cost of 20 of the most prescribed drugs under the Medicare Part D program from 2012 to 2017. 12 of the 20 drugs saw the price increase of more than 50% of the five-year period and six had price increases of over 100%. During the five-year period, total sales revenue increased by $8.5 billion despite 48 million fewer prescriptions written on the 20 most commonly prescribed drugs. Now back to Manuel with weather and news. Thank you, Maya. It's sunny day in Northridge. It's currently 76 degrees. We will continue to bring the heat with a high of 82 degrees. You can now put your jackets away because the rain is over. We'll have mostly sunny days the rest of the week with the weekend being partly cloudy. A missing cat has reunited with its owner after 14 years. Perry Martin had been separated from his cat, Thomas Jr., after Hurricane Jean struck Florida in 2004. Martin says his cat escaped through an open window and wandered off after the hurricane. After searching for months, Martin assumed his cat was killed on a nearby highway. 
On March 5th, Thomas Jr. reappeared in the Wadsworth family front yard, covered in fleas, looking very thin, and walking funny. The Wadsworths looked, took him to their family vet. They were able to track down and reunite Thomas Jr. with his original owner. Martin says this is a fairy tale ending that you would always wish for. Thank you for watching Matador News. I'm Ricardo Sandoval. I'm Manuel Fuentes. I'm Imai Milan Wright. And I'm Claudia Flores.